Hello YouTube, I am Lul Stamp and today we're going to break Bedrock. Bedrock is the in-game material for Rotary Craft. It is extremely difficult to get to, but you can get it. You can get it for free and you can do it in a single chunk and that is the goal of today's video. But first you need this and this and this and this before we can break bedrock for free we have to expend fuel to do it using a gas turbine a 16 to 1 gearbox and the bedrock breaker I don't know if the engine control unit's actually necessary but it, it's kinda nice to be able to shut it down by and you right click yeah, you right click with the screwdriver and you can change the speed settings all the way through and then you can make it so that it's redstone operated or not redstone operated. Anyway, to do it this way, you need a bucket and 21 buckets of jet fuel in the gas turbine will break one block of bedrock. I'm not going to actually do it because it's extremely loud and this is really just the setup that I used in the beginning to get the, the initial startup for the bedrock so I could make the, um, so I could upgrade the hydrokinetic engines. Now that we have a little bit of bedrock, we can upgrade our hydrokinetic engines to bedrock hydrokinetic engines, meaning we can string eight of them together instead of four. We need eight to power the bedrock breaker for free, but even once we do that, we still have to produce a ton of lubricant to keep them running. So we're going to start at the top and work our way down to the hydrokinetic engines. What I've got right in front of me is the chunk, the topmost portion of the chunk that is in use. There's 143 dirt blocks being used to farm canola. I will go into the specifics of what is all the different parts, I'll put it in a Google document and I will uh, link it in the description so you can see everything that's here. But suffice it to say for right now there are 11 fans and each fan is farming 13 blocks of dirt for canola. The sprinkler system here is keeping it watered so I'm not losing a block for watering but um, there's a problem with the sprinkler system in Rotary Craft, and it was actually the, the water from the sprinkler was going through the dirt blocks below and uh, was putting out the nether rack all the way down at the bottom where the, the grinders were being operated. So I had to thicken the layer underneath the dirt here uh, such that it wouldn't go through. So it was two or three blocks of dirt or stone to keep it from going through and putting out the nether rack below. Also, that's um, the same reason. It has a radius of about 8 up here that it will water, which is why it's off-centered, because it was putting out the nether rack running the steam engines back here as well. Okay, so those fans are pushing the, the canola as it's harvested. It turns into the yellow flowers and then gets pushed down here, where it's being picked up by two vacuum hoppers. There's a buffer here as a java barrel, and then it's going into the ender chest, where it is being distributed below to the grinder system. Over here there are eight source blocks of water. This is the beginning where it starts to fall and I will show you that below. It's falling more than 64 blocks and that is what you need in order to get maximum power off the system. So anyway, let's turn this off and go take a look below. All right, so what we've got here is basically from the same vantage point, but we're now standing underneath the canola seed farm. You can see the water falling on the top left side, going down more than 64 blocks before it hits the hydrokinetic engines, which are several stories still below, um, right above the bedrock level. The, the layout that you're seeing down directly below us is um, it's an example of the layout that I'm using and where everything goes. We'll come to that um, in a little bit, but in the meantime, let's go take a look further down. Okay, I realize that what you're seeing probably looks like a huge mess, but I have, um, I, I hope that I can show you 
what is going on here in a pretty concise manner in just a little bit. This is the system that is grinding up the canola. You can see the ender chest there. Um, that's where the canola seeds are being brought into the system. The ender IO item conduits are distributing all of the canola seeds to the series of grinders. The lubricant pipes, the water pipes, the coolers, the gearboxes, all of it. It looks like a mess, but um, it is grinding. It's 20 grinders being powered right here. It can be expanded by about four more um, before the chunk can no longer contain it. But it takes about 20, 19 and a half or so, to keep the hydrokinetic engines going. So let's go take a look at the floor plan of this guy up close and maybe it'll make it easier to understand what's going on. Let's turn hover off and the engine off and then let's... Okay, so here's the floor plan. Um, we saw it from above earlier. You can you can see the red is where the um, the nether rack is below all of the engines. So there's 20 pieces of nether rack. The other holes are for the item conduits that pull the used husks out of the grinders. But anyway, let's turn this off, and then you can see it's just an engine, a gearbox, and a grinder. Everything else is kind of secondary. You need the cooler to keep the grinder, or I'm sorry, the engines from exploding. They um, they need to be at 100 to run, 100 degrees Celsius to run. But at this depth, 10, or I think we're at level 10 or so, they will explode if you don't have a cooler on them. They get too hot and then they blow up. Okay, I think I've got this set up so it'll be a little bit easier to see now. Um, we still have the engine with the cooler. Can't take the coolers off. The gearboxes and the grinders. But, as you can see, there are the lubricant hoses connecting the gearboxes to the grinders. The output from the grinders, the lubricants going into gearboxes. Again and again. The water pipes right here are feeding the backsides of all of the steam engines. And these item conduits are feeding into each of the grinders. Get out of here, bat. All right, but these are not connected. The lubricant isn't going anywhere. It's only ever going to feed these. So what we have to do is build them up and build them up so they can go over the water pipe. And we have to do that here as well. And we have to do that here as well. Okay, so now they're all interconnected. Okay, now they're interconnected. Um, and that's all of them included. So what I just did there was bring it down through the floor, back to the reservoir system, which is right under here, and then straight into the conduit pipes. I'm sorry, the, um, the hydrokinetic engines. Okay, but I had to take these off. The item conduits I had to remove as well to make it easier to see. So we put those there, there, and there. And then they have to be altered so that they are inserting. And then they need to be mirroring the other side. They need to be able to go over these pipes or they get in the way and they'll block a, um, a cooling fin or something like that. So anyway, that's the system reassembled in your presence. I hope that that helps a little bit in understanding this layout. I, I realize it's it looks strange, but it works very, very well and it's pretty concise. So all of the lubricant is now going into the pipe down there. So um, that pipe is leading into these reservoirs, which are about half full. And then it's coming out the bottom, and it's feeding all of these hydrokinetic engines, which are all full. I'm going to show you an unfortunate fact. All right, so now we're missing one. And I'm going to 
going to replace it. No, nope, it's already there. I'm going to replace it, but notice notice the Wayla number for millibuckets when I place it. All right, it started off at zero. So when you break a hydrokinetic engine, you lose all of the lubricant that was in it, which is 24 buckets, and that's quite a bit. So just be aware of that fact when you move them, if you have to move them. But um, now we have all eight of them working. They're all being lubricated. And over here we have a single bevel gear leading into a series of bedrock shafts, another bevel gear to turn it, more shafts, and more bevel gears, more shafts, etc. And I'm little by little eating every single piece of the floor down to bedrock zero level where it cannot be broken. That is it for this video. Um, if you have any comments that you would like to leave, uh, particularly for other viewers, it will not hurt my feelings if you know a better way or an easier way or a faster way to accomplish what is going on here. Please feel free to do so. Thank you again for watching.